Oh, well, good morning, our beloveds. Let's start the introduction just a little differently to change the vibration of your connection to our messages. You oftentimes have a particular expectation energetically on how it will begin, and that creates patterns which sometimes are not ideal because you end up getting in a rut because you are not actively listening as much as you are passively listening. Believe it or not, when you all get into ruts, patterns, habits, routines, those types of things, you find that much no longer flows actively because you're not engaged in your lives as much as you are playing the role of being you while your soul is exploring the universe. This is called dissociation now. It can happen during trauma, obviously, because your psyche does not wish to be present when something really horrid happens. For example, when you are about to transition, your psyche, your subconscious, will pull out of your body and is not present during what we like to lovingly call the splat. So when you are in an abusive or dangerous situation, but which will not kill you, you also dissociate because it is the soul's or the psyche's natural solution to avoiding the energetic imprint on your soul's expression. But, believe it or not, you also dissociate when you are bored or no longer actively engaged in living your lives. And this is why you can drive from point A to point B and not really remember because you're on autopilot. Your reptilian brain or your amygdala, which is normally the fight, flight, or fawn specialty, it also just handles the day-to-day activities which do not require active participation from your psyche, which is the decision-making and the processing and the experiencing. So today we wish to talk about the dissociation that comes from being in a non-activated state. Now, many, if not most of you, were living and continue to live in that mindset or state of mind. You have gotten so bored with your jobs, with your extracurricular activities, with your lattes and your dinners and even your vacations, believe it or not, because you are always looking for a high that is higher than the prior high, similar to a drug addict or an alcoholic, but you are finding now in this new energy where it's hard to top higher highs from before. And for those of you who have not transitioned to this new way of being, You're really disillusioned with life, and many of you have gone into this dissociated state of mind where you are just on autopilot again until something exciting happens. So maybe we need to set your car on fire or have a beloved person in your life die or make you change jobs or burn your house down or transition one of your pets, anything that forces you back into your body after the shock wears off. Now, you all think that it is cruel of the universe to do this, but what if we tell you that your soul has been trying to get your attention all of these years and you're just resisting, so your soul then decides to step it up a notch and another notch and another notch, And sometimes that is why these really catastrophic things happen because 
your soul is literally trying to get your attention. So maybe it is your attention or the attention of another at times where your soul contracts are to merge, to match, to release, to govern others. The life contracts you have entered into are so complicated and so interconnected that sometimes your activations are not only to activate you, but another person who is beloved in your life to make certain that they also see you clearly as you currently are. So for example, a suicide attempt is not only a cry for help from the soul of that individual, but also to the others in that family construct so that others would see this person as they are and that the others could show up in a more meaningful way, meaning that you stop either enabling them or you stop hurting them, that you actually sit down with this individual and figure out what it is that they are trying to transmit to you and what it is that they ideally would like to receive or see you offer them. It is that simple. When people do self-harm, it is oftentimes, though not always, a visible cry for help because you have failed to see them and their full state of being. Now, you all judge others so harshly who make rash decisions, but maybe these rash decisions are not actually rash decisions, but are a series of dominoes that play out until what you deem this rash decision is really the only one left in their minds at that very moment. It does not mean that it is the only option, but it is the only option that they see. So for those of you who are struggling with this placement in life, meaning that you are struggling with thoughts of suicide because you just don't know what to do, listen to your own inner instincts very closely because when it is on your radar, meaning that you are just tired of life, it will only take one small event that would cause you to crumble and to see no other options. So the best thing for you is to have a valid conversation with those around you. Get yourself a therapist and say, these are my thoughts right now. It is not a shameful thing to be considering suicide. It is just a realistic expression of where you find yourself. Figure out what tools you have in your toolbox, what people um, are in your life to help you to navigate this. Who are the go-to people where you know that they can hear you fully, right? Have the 911 number ready to go, the suicide hotline. Make certain that you realize that certain medications can push you there, that certain drugs can push you there, such as alcohol. Anything that numbs you or depresses you further or lowers your vibration <clears throat> can get you to a place where you would consider the unimaginable. Or it could be something as crazy as um, taking a gun and shooting somebody else because you have nothing to lose. So many of you really are on the edge of the precipice these days trying to figure out how to stir up your life so that you are no longer living in this dissociated state because your soul recognizes <clears throat> the change in vibration that is uh, coming in these days and how much your soul wishes to participate in these changes because this is why your soul 
incarnated this time around to be part of this shift. And for those of you who have others in your lives, who have chosen to do the unimaginable in one way or another, see their action as a gift to you as well, meaning your soul and their soul have either a contract or a relationship where your souls are interconnected and you are meant to create a different future for yourself because of this catalyzing event. When you stop dissociating and begin to actively look at these triggers and stressors and shocks in your life, it is there for a reason. There are no coincidences and there are no unearned events, meaning what you are going through has a cosmic purpose. When you see these catalyzing events, stop putting yourself in the victim mindset of the oh why me? You can do that for a bit obviously, but then say what am I to learn from this and how can I shift my future by properly responding to this event. There is no right nor wrong way. It is merely to catalyze you into coming back to life and then following that inner gut feeling, not the one that comes from fear, but the one that comes from love. If it is a fear vibration, it is not here to guide you to wholeness. It is here to continue to teach you that fear is not your friend other than to catalyze you into becoming love. And if your response is love-based, then you can begin to move towards that space. The simplest solution for these circumstances is to say, if I was in the place of that other person, how ideally would I want people to show up for me? It is generally not those harsh, rigid rules of get up and cracking the whip that get the other person motivated to show up in life. It is not what you desire either. That is a fear-based response. Structure is good, but it needs to be flexibly designed to allow for the ebbs and the flows of life. And when you are too rigid on yourself or on others, it creates more rigid experiences that bounce back to you, which oftentimes ends up in these shocking experiences because you are designed to express from a loving place, place of compassion, a place where you apologize for the perceived harms by the other to simply say, I am so sorry that I hurt you. I did not intend to, but if you felt it as a hurt, then I accept that you perceive it accurately and I am sorry. And how can we move past this? It is a difficult time, especially during these really catalyzing moments, but it is where you all find yourselves. So embrace these catalyzing times. Stop burying your head in the sand and take action that comes from a loving perspective and not a harsh, critical, justice-oriented, rigid, analytically supported solution. Those will no longer work in this new energy. It should be free-flowing and love-based. And when you move into this energetic flow of decision-making, you will find much is altered in your life because you can no longer live the old way. It is no longer supported energetically by the universe, so you might as well just slip into the new flow as soon as you can because your life and those around you will begin to harmonize in a new way. It doesn't mean that it takes away the catalyzing events and it doesn't mean that your lives will run smoothly. It merely means that your solution or reaction or response to the catalyzing event 
changes dramatically from a fear-based to a love-based response. That is it. So we wish to bid you adieu as we are on the other side of the midpoint of this week, which doesn't even exist because there is no time. Time is a construct that you made up in order to create a greater productivity. But what if productivity is not the point? So begin to let loose a bit and enjoy a little bit more from a love-based vibration and things will shift into this new energetic imprint for which you incarnated this time around. Trust that there are no coincidences and everything, and we mean everything, is here to teach you to become love. Love for self as well as love for others. And so it is. Namaste.